Okay, so I got this lightweight crank set here on AliExpress for 40 quid. It's got aluminium crank arms, aluminium chain rings, that's, that's both of them, and controversially, it's also got an aluminium axle running through there. So, so two years later, how is this thing holding up? What are, what are the drawbacks? And why could it just uh, fail, basically, uh, out of nowhere? Well, yeah, let's, uh, let's find out. Right then, lightning quick sponsor spot for you. Sirocco, love working with these folks. They do some really cool cycle gear that looks great on the bike, is great value and lasts ages as well. I genuinely love their stuff and wear it on every ride that I do. In fact, this gilet's got mud all over it from the ride at the weekend. Um, anyway, they'll kick you out head to toe. So if you wanna check out some of their gear, link in the description will get you 10% off your order. Um, also, they've just released a cool little movie that shows off some of their gear on the bike. So um, if you wanna see some of their stuff, in action, then yeah, um, you can check that out as well. And I've linked that in the description too. Um, anyway, that's done. Let's go. Hello and welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to, uh, to another, ugh, really, Trace Fellow uh, production. My name, as always, yeah, it's, uh, it's Luke. Right, two years ago, I picked up this uh, lightweight aluminium crank set here or chain set, as the British would say. Um, yeah, and I did this rather splendid video about it. Gaze in awe as it slowly rotates on the lid of my rice cooker. So I picked it up on AliExpress in December of 2019 for 39 pounds 90p. Uh, but I think with the Express, Express shipping option that I chose, it was just over 48 quid delivered to my door. Um, now, since buying it, I've put just over 7,000 miles on it and at 711 grams, it is pretty lightweight. But with that full aluminium construction, there are definitely a couple of trade-offs to kind of to be aware of. So without further ado, let's give this rude boy the once over. So here it is, and for 7,000 odd miles, I'd say this thing looks pretty good actually. Now the crank arms themselves, uh, these are totally fine, which is not really surprising. I've had pedals in and out of these dozens and dozens of times as well, and the threads are still perfect. The chain rings, however, these aren't the original ones. The one it came with is right here. Now these are quite cool actually. It's a one piece construction. So both chain rings are machined from a single block or billet of, uh, of aluminium to keep things nice and light, and nice and stiff. But regardless, let me show you why I replaced this one. So I was getting a loud clicking noise every time I got out of the pedals and put the power down. And you can see here, when I hold the bike steady, even though this chain is brand new, when putting pressure on the pedals, the crank set can shift around and make a clicking noise. And you can really see this towards the bottom of the chain ring, actually. Now, replacement chain rings are cheap and easy to get hold of. I got one on AliExpress for like 25 quid. So got that installed and yeah, the problem was fixed. Now, I can probably get a few more miles out of this original chain ring here, but the teeth are pretty thin, especially on the inner chain ring. The clicking was a bit annoying, and I don't think it would be too long before I risked teeth kind of snapping off under load. Plus, as I mentioned, replacement chain rings are pretty cheap. Now, the, the name of this replacement is quite interesting, so I'll zoom in for you. Um, yeah, Gold, Goldix. Goldix. Yeah, I think this guy might have had one of those, actually. I love Gold! Anyway, mileage-wise, I got just over 5,000 miles out of this original chain ring here. Not a huge amount, it has to be said, but I think one of the main factors that dramatically increased the wear on this thing was the cheapo VG Sports chain that I ran for a month or two. I did a video on it, and I'll splice in some clips here, but basically, it stretched massively, knackered my cassette, and I'm sure it didn't do this original chain ring any favors either. So check out that video later. But I think unless you're super hot, on cleaning your bike and keeping on top of chain wear and stuff. You'll be lucky to hit eight to 10,000 miles out of one of these things. Now, for some of you out there, this is probably a bit of a deal breaker. I, mean, I think I read somewhere that people expect 60, 70,000 miles out of their chain rings. Um, now, I suspect they were steel, but for me, the lightweight nature of this thing, combined with the fact that the replacement chain rings are so cheap definitely makes it viable, especially considering the latest gen 105 Ultegra and Dura Ace um, crank sets. They, they use aluminium chain rings as well. And it's the same alloy as this one, 7075. And I doubt you'd find replacement chain rings for those for less than 30 quid. 
Anyway, while we're talking chain rings, let's cover shifting performance. And it's, it's, it's flawless, basically really, really good, both up and down the range. I mean, you can see in this footage, the backside of the chain ring is, is contoured and there are four hardened steel pegs to help kind of lift the chain up into the big ring. So yeah, uh, the, the shifting up and down, really, really good. The overall stiffness is also pretty, pretty bonza. Uh, yeah, now admittedly, I'm not a wattage demon and I don't weigh a huge amount either. So I'm not putting like massive amounts of torque through the crankset here, but still, I've, I've certainly not noticed any problems in that department. It seems, it seems pretty stiff to me. Um, so yeah, I suspect some of you out there are thinking, wow, this thing, this thing sounds great. What's the, what's the catch? <laughs> well, let me elucidate for you. Cool, so while this is coming off the bike, if you could take a second to subscribe, and I know more than 50% of you out there haven't done that, because I can see these things. Um, <laughs> yeah, anyway, uh, subscribing really does help me out, and if you could hit the like button as well while you're down there, yeah, bonus points for you. Um, <laughs> anyway, enough of that, and let's crack on. Okay, so here it is off the bike, and this crank set is Holotech 2 compatible. So that's the Shimano standard, and basically means the axle here is 24 millimeters in diameter. So presumably aluminium was chosen for the axle in this case, because it's lighter than steel, and I guess it's easier to machine as well, so might keep the costs of manufacture a little bit lower. Now to my knowledge, and feel free to correct me in the comments, Shimano have never used an aluminium axle like this on their cranks. They always opt for steel. And I think I know the reason for it, but um, forgive me here, we're gonna get slightly technical. So metal fatigue will occur when a piece of metal, so the, so the axle in this example, is put under repeated stresses or repeated kind of loads. So um, basically when you get out of the saddle and you're kind of <laughs> smashing up a hill or something like that, the axle is being put under repeated load cycles. Now aluminium and steel, they will both fatigue and, and eventually fail, but let me pull up a graph and I'll try and explain the difference. Now steel will fatigue and break, but below a certain level of stress, which is indicated by that plateau on the graph there, steel has an indefinite fatigue life. So this basically means that below a certain level of stress, you can load up a piece of steel as many times as you want really, and it won't compromise or fatigue that metal in any way. So at least on paper, it has an infinite lifespan. Now aluminium isn't like this. You can see the curve is constant for aluminium, and that's because any amount of stress or load that you place upon a piece of aluminium will fatigue it in some way, kind of regardless of how small, and repeat that enough times, and that will lead to that piece of aluminium fatiguing, failing, and, and breaking on you, basically. So presumably, this is one of the reasons that Shimano have always stuck with steel for their kind of crank set axles. But where does that leave this one here? With an aluminium one. I mean, it's seemingly fine and certainly hasn't broken yet. But um, one of you guys actually, Paul from Melbourne, emailed me with these pictures. So you can see it's exactly the same crank and shows a classic example of failure via metal fatigue. Apparently he'd only had them for about six months and he was just pulling away from the lights. So kind of loading up the pedal and it snapped out of nowhere. Now, luckily he wasn't hurt, which is the, which is the most important thing. But there's also this post on Reddit um, from a guy with exactly the same crank that's also met exactly the same fate. The problem with metal fatigue like this is that it's very difficult to spot beforehand. I suspect even if you pulled out the, the axle and inspected it just before it failed, you probably wouldn't see much because fatigue like this manifests in minute cracks within the crystalline structure of the metal, which would kind of culminate over time and failure can just kind of pop out of nowhere. Basically, it's, it's really, really difficult to predict. So that's definitely a massive risk with these cranks here. But one other issue, which a lot of you raised, was the fact that the steel bottom bracket bearings, are they gonna kind of eat into the softer aluminium of that axle? Now for starters, a lot of bottom brackets, like this pretty standard Shimano one here, they have plastic or nylon caps over the end that actually cover the bearings, so your axle never touches them. But even when it, when it did, so I have the bottom bracket on this bike, the aluminium axle is in direct contact with the steel bearings. You can see in this clip, there's still very little wear on the axle. It might look like there is there, but it's actually completely smooth. That's just kind of surface discoloration. So yeah, it's good to be aware of this issue, but it's not something to be super concerned with, if you ask me. Um, so yeah, overall, a <laughs> little bit risky with these, with these aluminium axles here, but it's not all doom and gloom. So let me wrap this up and I'll explain why. 
Now, firstly, the company that makes this crank set, so uh, CVR, they've since migrated to a steel axle, actually, at a weight penalty of an additional 25 grams. So uh, yeah, thank you again to Paul from Melbourne for that, for that info. So chances are, if you buy one of these now, it'll have a steel axle. So the shifting's great, it's nice and stiff, and replacement chain rings are cheap. So get on with a steel axle and you are, you're flying. Um, yeah, but if like me, you've got one with an aluminium axle, yeah, what's the deal? Well, it's a tough one, really. You might think uh, that all aluminium axles are trash after this, but back in 2018, SRAM unveiled their new dub standard for bottom brackets and crank sets, and they've got a slightly larger diameter axle. So this is 24 millimeters in diameter. The new dub standard is 28.99, so, so 29 millimeters in diameter basically. But all of the axles in, in SRAM's new dub range, they're all made of aluminium. So it's clearly a viable option. Now, the obvious argument is that the increased diameter of 29 millimeters just really improves the stiffness and the strength of the axle, which makes this possible. And maybe 24 millimeters is just a little too narrow. But, but what's my advice? Well, I think if you're a bit of a heavier rider and maybe you do some like really intense climbs out of the saddle and you're running one of these with an aluminium axle, I would probably advise you swap it out. You, you just don't know when it's gonna fail and it could end <laughs> yeah, really badly, you, you just don't know. But for better or worse, <laughs> I'm, I'm actually gonna keep using it, at, at least for the time being. I think SRAM have proven that aluminium is a viable option. I'm not like a massively heavy rider. I mean, I'll put my weight on the screen so you can judge for yourself. And I, I'm not a track cyclist or anything. I don't put out massive amounts of watts. So I'm gonna risk it for a biscuit and leave it on. Um, yeah, <laughs> let me know in the comments if you think I'm being a bit of an idiot and I'm making a grievous mistake. But <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Anyway, in the meantime, I'm actually testing out a new crank set. And some of you in the last video with eagle eyes, you spotted it. So yeah, let's have a quick look. Okay, so this is my rim brake road bike that I've been showing you in this episode so far. This is my disc brake road bike that I built up more recently. And this is the new crank here. It's from a company called Senex, which you can, which you can see there. They've actually partnered with Sensar to produce this new crank. It's based on the SRAM dub standard, actually, that I mentioned earlier. So a chunkier aluminum axle running through there, meant to be stiffer with better weatherproofing, increased durability, better preload adjustment as well, apparently. So all sorts of advantages. So it's a fully aluminum construction with a similar one piece chain ring to the other crank. And I'm only about 300 miles into it so far, but it's very good. Let's, um, let's just say that much. So review coming up for that soon. But if you wanna check it out, I've left a link in the video description for you. Anywho, lots of new stuff coming up this year, including these new rim brakes that I picked up the other day, all carbon fiber, baby. So yeah, <laughs> interesting stuff. So get subscribed, basically. It's shaping up to be a pretty good year. Right, anyway, that is it. That's all we have time for in this episode. So yeah, subscribe if you like this kind of stuff. Hit the like button if you enjoyed uh, this episode that I've produced for you. Uh, yeah, and if you've got any questions, or any comments, or maybe you've got some criticisms for me, for my uh, continued use of this rude boy. Uh, then yeah, drop me a comment down below and uh, I'll try and get back to as many of you as I can. Even if you're mean to me, I'll reply to you. Uh, <laughs> anyway, right, that is it. That's all we've got time for. So I'll see you, uh, yeah, next time. Ciao, ciao.